Live from Parts Unknown, you're listening to Simon Miller's Pro Wrestling Podcast. The only wrestling podcast on the planet, we think. Sit back, relax, prepare for positivity to run through your veins as Simon Miller gives you your weekly dose of powerful pro wrestling audio. It is Miller Time. Hello and welcome to a very special edition of Simon Miller's Pro Wrestling Podcast. My name is Simon Miller and this is a Pro Wrestling Podcast. Now, again, don't adjust your television sets. It's indeed a Monday and you are indeed getting an episode of the podcast. But sometimes, as you may know, I have patrons on to join me to talk about pro wrestling because I love the wrestling community and these people are kind enough to support me at patreon.com forward slash Simon316. And yes, cheap plug, you can do that too. And if you give me a dollar, it allows me to do even more of these things, which is why that is such a tremendous platform to begin with. And somebody we had on recently, told me they were going to the, one of the New Japan shows in the UK, which I was uh, going to go to, and I didn't for a very specific reason that will become very clear over the next weeks and months, so we're going to talk about that now. So, I said to my man, who's about to, about to start talking with me, that he should come back on and tell me about the show that I think he drove around four hours to see, and it is Patreon member Luke. Luke, how you doing, dude? Oh, Simon, I'm very good, thank you. How are you, sir? I'm alright. Are you tired? I'm alright now. I got in about three o'clock. This morning? Uh, I'm all right, yeah. Oh, man, so like, you just, you're up and smashing it already. Yeah, I'm all good. Okay, so you did indeed drive from Plymouth all the way yep. to Manchester for New Japan uh, Night 2, the New Japan show. They had one in Milton Keynes on uh, Saturday, and yep. they had one in Manchester last night as we record this. Yeah, I did. And it was well worth it, too. Now, I've, I've seen some of the pictures, and basically, I mean, there was more at the Manchester show, I believe, but basically there was two and a half to 3,000 people at each show. Which yeah. is a, it's incredible, an incredible crowd. Like I know, uh, as WWE fans, sometimes we forget. Uh, you know, you, you kind of see you know tens of thousands of people, and you, you kind of take that for the norm. But you forget that really, you know, WWE is a beast unto itself, and also that you know, as some house shows they don't even do that these days. But that's neither here nor there. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically they were they were they were huge successes, and from what I've heard just great shows all around and so you know the fact that you got to go to the one on the sunday i thought well, let's get you one let's talk about it let's see yeah you know let's get a first-hand report of uh, strong sort of over uk night two where yeah. where was what arena was it in manchester it was just outside of manchester it was altering altering that's where wcpw used to run so i've been there. yeah i've seen so many it's, of things it's the there. ice skating that's rink. right how did you find yeah. it as a venue i like it yeah, it's nice actually because it's sort of like because of like, obviously it's based on like a um, an ice skating yeah. pitch court that sort of thing. I don't know what, rink. They, what they call it rink. Know, rink. Yeah, um, obviously it's like quite oval based. So when they put the ring in the middle, everyone's sort of like you know like evenly spread around the the ring, which yeah. I thought was quite good. And did they have a good atmosphere and stuff? Because when I was there, they had really the, the, the sort of I don't know the acoustics or whatever, but everything that was meant to felt loud, felt loud, and vice versa. Yeah, it definitely did. Yeah, yeah, it really. Uh, like especially later on in the night when like the more famous people come out, yeah. the atmosphere was amazing. What was the vibe before the match started? Because I imagine a lot of people have never been to a New Japan show before. So, oh. have you been to WWE shows in the past? I haven't. No, I've gone. I've been to a couple of like indie um, local ones, but okay, I've so got like WWE ones booked. Yeah. Um, well, 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 we'll talk to you about that as well then. But I mean, in terms of what you felt before, did it feel like? like did it feel like a big show? Did it feel like an exciting show? I mean, uh, yeah, it sort of did. Yeah, like everyone who was around was like quite buzzing. You had like uh, Will Osprey was down like in in amongst the crowd before um, with. Bone Soldier and El Fantasmo, <laughs> and people were literally paying Will Osprey money to chop them, and it was it was a deafening sound as well. Like there I literally, well, I didn't see him money. there. Yeah, I didn't see him there. Like there was a set of stairs, and I heard the chop, and I literally thought I turned around, I thought someone fell down the stairs because that's how loud it was. Because everyone you just heard, uh, you heard like the chop, and then a, oh. <laughs> and I thought, oh my god, someone's fell down the stairs. It wasn't until I seen Will Osprey, I thought, that's what they're doing. So, how much like merchandise was there and stuff? Like, was it just was it the was it the wrestlers selling on their tables? Was it like an indie show? or Was it other people doing it for them? No, it was other people selling like t-shirts and and yeah. stuff like that. But yeah, there was a lot of wrestlers selling like autographs and and photographs and stuff. Did you get one? Which, which was that one? I got one with um, Jay White after, which I was so happy with because the US title was like my favorite belt. And as soon as me and my friends see him there, I was I couldn't get over the barrier quick enough. I was trying to sprint round to him. <laughs> so I, I was well excited for that. I love it. That's, that's, that's the way to be, man. People always go, "Are oh, yeah. you stupid, Mark?" Yeah, 
I'm a wrestling yeah. fan. Like, what do you mean? Did you have a boring time? I hate when Yeah, exactly. Like it was and, amazing. It was yeah. great photo. You put the belt on me. I was loving it. Okay, I love it, man. I love it. Um, so have you got? Can you send me that picture? Yeah, I will do. I, yeah, I, I will put it in the uh, in the thumb in the uh, the video for the for the. Uh, for, if you're watching this on YouTube, youtube.com, force of the middle port rules, you'll be able to see that. Yeah, I'll whack it. I'll whack it in there. Um, yeah, okay, so I, I've got the results up here. I've got to assume they're in the right order, but feel free to tell me if they're not. Yeah, um, I've got them. In the right order, okay, yeah. so um, I'm going to, again, this is mostly going to be on you, my friend. I know nothing about this aside from one match, which I went on my way to find clips of, but we'll talk to that when we get there. Because. Yep. It was very surprising, and I think you already know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But I think we started off with the Danny Duggan match, correct? Yeah, so that was a surprise opponent. Um, I oh, never what? actually heard of who he was. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know. So he hadn't been announced before. I oh, know, because he was the guy, he had a question he, he mark on, on the f- poster. That's right, I do remember yeah. this. Yeah, he was on, it was um, whoever fa- faced Shota Umino on the first night. Yeah. Uh, his name was the Great Okan, and he's, he was called Tomiyuki Oka. Yeah, that's right, yep. And a uh, the guy next to me have heard of him, but I, I hadn't. Um, yeah. But now he came down with like a question mark on his face as well. So that, <laughs> that was quite interesting. Um, oh, yeah, wrestling's so weird. It was, it was very strange, yeah. Um, as like a surprise opponent. But yeah, he came down to it. It was, it was sort of weird, I think, because um, like the, the crowd was so big, it was hard to get into it straight away with like the chants and stuff. Um, with it being... I guess not a lot of people had heard of this Tomoyuki person either. Um, so it wasn't like an amazing atmosphere for that one, but it was an all right match. I think Duggan took a lot of, uh, a lot of beating um, and he, en- he ended up losing as well. Um, but no, it was, it was all right to start off to get like, the night going, really. Nice little quick match. Yeah, so how long did he, he took on... Um, I never know. He, is it, was he announced as Dominator Great O'Khan or was he just Great O'Khan? I never know what his name is, that guy. Uh, I just, I think he just said Great Okan, and then they said the, his actual name. But yeah, I don't think they said the dominating. So w- would you would you would you say? It was, I mean, no, it wasn't because it wasn't broadcast. But would you say it's basically that kind of served as a dark match for the evening, just to get everybody warmed up, everybody into? Yeah, yeah. I think it was. Yeah, just for people who haven't got to their seats yet, that sort of thing. Okay, I think. And yeah. then and then so so we'll call it a dark match because I think you have to take the next match as an opener because I think yeah. as soon as you got Yuji Nagata coming out. Um, yeah. is like okay well now you know, yeah that's the thing right a, a is a legend but b he's also someone that's instantly really recognizable like especially yeah. to a crowd like that you're like he's one of those guys that i think if you've got like a you know a list of people that you want you want to see you know usually the guys on that list he's been around i mean he, he was in wcw if i if yeah. i recall correctly so yeah um and he took on shoto amuno uh he's Nagata. a young lion yeah yeah well, i know a little bit about him as well just from yeah, I think it's just from you know covering wrestling so much. It's yeah. just a name that you know I couldn't tell you much about him, but it's a name that continually comes up as you you know yeah again. He's very good. Well, that's, that's, that's I, I'm quite impressed with him. Yeah, um, I, I've seen him on like um, like matches on New Japan World um, through like the Young Lions and when they face like they face like Tiger Mask and uh, Jushin Liger quite often on on like their, their sort of pay-per-views. Yeah. So I, I was aware of him before he came on, but no, nah, he was very impressive. I, I, I think we all sort of agreed, uh, my group of friends, that, you know, he was, even though he's cast as like a young lion and obviously they got like a certain set of moves that they're only allowed to do, like the Boston Crab is sort of like their only submission, that sort of thing, if you're like unaware of like the young lion setup. Um, but I, I was really impressed with him and I think everyone else was as well. But yeah, it was just nice to see Yuji Nagata really because obviously he's the guy's a legend. I can imagine. And also, was it but like most young lion matches I booked, did Nagata just beat the shit out of him for a while? Yeah, there wasn't a lot coming back from show to him. You know, he, he got the Boston Crab and obviously because Nagata's quite old now, it's he's very restricted in what he could do. But that's why he's so smart though, isn't it? Like, it's, the, yeah. it's his selling that gets it for me. I don't want to get into it too much. But you know, the fact that the reason I always feel like he could go for another five years or so is that he sells so well that yeah. you kind of believe everything he's doing anyway. So he doesn't need to do that much. No, he, he didn't move around the ring like a lot, but he didn't need to. Like it didn't, yeah. it wasn't like, oh my God, this is an embarrassing match. Like you could tell this guy's aging, but like obviously he was restricted to what he could do, but it was still an entertaining match for a guy of his age. Like it was still impressive. And How long did it go, uh, do you think? Oh, I would have said about seven, eight minutes. Okay, it so again, we're still, too long. we're still burning up because obviously he won within a gutter lock, which I think is the most... Yeah, you know, obvious, obvious finish in the world, and to me, that's just a really good way to start a show. Like, it just again, oh, yeah, legend coming out, going against a young guy, getting the guy a bit of exposure. Obviously, the the veteran wins as they always do in those matches. Yes, yeah. um, and I, what I like about it as well is uh, Nagata like left to his ovation, and then they left Shoto Umino 
in the ring so that everyone could give him an ovation. Oh, that's good. Which was nice. So, like, he ended up going out to, like, a standard ovation as well for, for his efforts. So that was nice. And he got one as well. It wasn't like... Yeah, he uh, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't like, like forced or embarrassing. Yeah, no, it, 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 it wasn't like one of those crowds that's just like, ah, <laughs> we're yeah, not going to do what we're told. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you got one, so it was good. Uh, okay, that's it was good. All good. Uh, and then, obviously, I, I think the way New Japan book shows is really smart, because obviously... You then go into the tag team or the the, the three way match, I should say. Uh, the you know yeah. what I mean, the six man tag. Six man tag. That's what I'm trying to say. Struggling yeah. to get there, but by the <laughs> yeah. second between uh, Suzuki Gun and Chaos, and I think yeah. the cool thing about that is I know everybody in this match is you know pretty much well. You know, if you watch New Japan, you pretty much know who they are. But to me, the second you got Gado and Yano out there, I just think it's yes. I don't, I don't it know. Was, it's just fun. Well, it was one of the matches that uh, me and my friends were looking forward to the most because we're massive Tori Yano fans. Well, I, every, I think everybody is, right? I don't know anyone well, that doesn't like so over. Like, I, I like him just because of his comedic aspects anyway. Yeah. And so does, so does my mates. But, like, when he come out, like, he was getting the biggest pop, one of the biggest pops of the night. I love it. I love it. it. Was, and then just to see him, like, his classic... Um, with his running out of his DVD, waving his hands. Like, I don't know what's on that DVD, but I want it. <laughs> he sold it to me. It could be all in Japanese. I just want to buy it how, just because he's waving it. How was he live? Because I know, obviously, I've never seen New Japan live ever. Yeah. In terms of in, in the flesh. And a lot of people say that, you know, they, they get the character and stuff. As a wrestler, there's, there's this, this, I see some people saying, oh, actually, no, he's better if you put him in a, you know, a real scenario or a serious scenario. But other people just go, nah, he's a comedy wrestler and that's that. Um, he did do like a lot of wrestling moves. He just did like his standard stuff, really. Um, so he, he came out and like took the turn buckle off, that sort of stuff. But a lot of it, he was um, he took a lot of a, a beating. So uh, he was getting like hit by the chairs in the crowd, that sort of stuff. Like they 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 got out of the railings and everything and went into the crowd because I can never remember his name, but it's the guy who comes out through the crowd from Suzuki Goon. Uh, I know you mean. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, That's like his entrance. I can't remember what he's called though. No, I can't either. But I know who you but, mean. I know who you mean. Yeah, he those those two like him and Yana were sort of like paired up for the majority of the match, and he was sort of like uh, taking a beating from from that guy. Um, so he didn't get a lot of offense in, but it was just still good to see him. But I should but, say as well, it was Suzuki Gun, which is uh, Kanemaru, Izuka, and Desperado, obviously. And yeah, they were going against Chaos. Oh, was he really? Again, I, I, again, I've never. I mean, you know, I'm only restricted to what I can see on TV and you know whatnot. So yeah. I, I, I don't really have like a huge. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A huge idea. I, I've seen a few, a few of his stuff, but not as much as I would like. I know that yeah. he obviously smashed it in Mexico for a while. Yeah, um, I was exactly the same. Like I've never really seen much of him because obviously I've only watched him really in in uh, tag matches yeah, or yeah. In junior tournament. But now nah, he was actually really good. Which I was quite surprised with, like live. So aside from Yano, obviously that won over. Was there anyone that was it? Desperado was a standout of the match. Then was he the guy that really sort of? I would have said from a performance wise, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, the other two was Yoshihashi. Yeah, of course. Which I think everyone, you know, I think Yoshihashi to me is he's always. I don't want to say he's synonymous with with New Japan, but I don't know. I just he just does his thing. He, to yeah. me, to me, he's always really solid. He's always really really good. He'll yeah, he's pre- also six and seven out of ten. Exactly, but in a good way. In the same yeah. way that I like Tomb Raider, the reboot, is it's a solid eight out of ten. I don't want it to be any more because yeah. it's just perfect. That's kind of how I see him as well. He does his bit. He'll probably oh, be around. I see him get pushed around, like pushed high. No, and it'll probably yeah. be around forever. But it'll always do, you know. Yeah, it'll it'll always it'll always it'll always do his thing. Um, what was the finish of this? I know Suzuki Gun won, but I don't know. Yeah. Okay, I know nothing about the finish. I think if I remember rightly, it was Kanemaru who pinned um yoshihashi it might have been it definitely wasn't toriyanu who took the pin yeah so it was either yoshihashi or the other guy i'm struggling to remember who that was now from chaos but how long that was it how long did the match go oh, about 10 minutes but it was it was it was a decent match for like comedic purposes like to see toriyanu playing up and um and like obviously when they went into the crowd and like the chair shots and stuff interacting with the crowd that was all really good so st- stuff like that it was it was an entertaining match definitely that's good. So, so at this stage, then, to me, those three matches feel like warm-up matches. Yeah. Just because I know and what then we're it, getting into. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then the next sort of two matches, I think, were because the 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 whole um, night was split into two. Oh, really? When was the interval? Uh, after the fifth 
match. One, two, three, four. So there's two matches right. to go before the interview. Yeah, right. This, okay, we'll talk about them now. That makes a lot of sense now you've said that because yeah. they then transitioned into Walter defeating uh, Yujihiro Takahashi, which yeah. even on paper is just the... They must have kicked the shit out of each other. I mean, they oh, must well, have just absolutely slammed each other. Yeah, it was... Uh, it wasn't a lot from uh, Yujiro, to be fair. It was a lot more from Walter, who is an absolute beast. Actually, his chops, I know everyone says it's like, you know, the sky yeah. is blue, but... My he, word. They were loud. Like, he was taking them across each different side of the ring, chopping him. Like, Yujiro's chest was red raw. But funny enough, that wasn't actually the loudest chops of the night. So I'll get onto that later on. But, uh, yeah, it was it was quite an entertaining match, to be fair. Like, Walter, I've never actually seen him in person. I've only ever seen, like, a couple of clips of him online. He is a big guy. Oh, and yeah. And he's, like, he's impressive to look at as well, like, in the ring. And, like, his whole... His whole gimmick, I I really like. So it's sort of like um, he comes out with that big like trench coat, and he and he does that pose, and he's like a scary guy, and like he's a bit like a brawler, I'd say, like with oh, his hits and stuff. Absolutely, I think it's his whole style, isn't it? Just like yeah. a kick ass machine. But what I really like about well, this is what I really like about him. I just think when you see him live, especially, you kind of understand why there's all these WWE rumors because you can yes. actually see like you can, you can, oh, see, I can see him in WWE. <laughs> yeah, definitely. not only he's got the size, but the way he works. Yeah, I mean, it's a compliment. Uh, you can see him fitting in there. Yeah, and like he had the crowd at the palm of his hands. Like he was, everything he was doing was a reaction from the like was getting a reaction from the crowd. They were just shouting his name constantly all the way through, and like that's that was saying against someone who came out with two extremely hot women in <laughs> next to no clothes. So, you know, that's quite impressive, really, from from his point of view. So, what was the finish? Um, I think he. I think it's like a power bomb. I think his finish is on Yujiro. Well, that's how he won it, though. He just power bombed him, and that was that. Yeah, yeah. It was it was an easy pin for yeah. How did it go? I'm asking all the same questions, but I find it interesting. No, I would have said it was about 10, 12 minutes. All right, it was, so it's still it was a... decent. Yeah, it was a decent length. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. And I imagine that's because after this, we got Tai Chi defeating Will Osprey. Yes. Now, which is a shock. Well, it was in, it was interference. I think I'm right in saying right. Yeah, it was kind of Mari came back out. Um, I think he has like a vodka, uh, a whiskey bottle. Yeah, he probably did. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> he, sense. he comes out with like a whiskey bottle and he, he puts like the whiskey in his mouth and he like tried to spit it at uh, Osprey. Uh, he didn't actually catch him though. He like Osprey seen it coming, like covered his mouth, which was quite funny, and then like kicked him. So he ended up spraying it all over himself and and um, Tai Chi, and then um, he ended up like knocking Kanemaru out of the ring. And then he did that like springboard, well, not springboard. He does like the thing where he springboards off the ropes, cartwheels, and then backflips out of the ring onto Kanemaru, Ridiculous. which was amazing to see. Yeah. So this was Will Ospreay in full on here. I wait, that's what he does. He knows one speed, which is why he's so good. Yeah. He's, oh, God, to see him in person, how actually quick he is. Yeah. It's, it's quite impressive. Yeah. But he, he, as you can imagine, he got a massive pop when he came out. Um, everyone loves him. And like it was quite good actually when he was actually against Tai Chi, he was he was chopping him, and you could literally hear after you chop him, he was going, "I've been practicing them," like because obviously <laughs> everyone had seen him before in in the crowd doing it before the the event started, so that like was quite it. good. I like it. That's good. Yeah, he's, he's got a great character, I think, Osprey. For someone who doesn't like you, don't hear him a lot on the mic. Um, I think like just his facial expressions and like his selling of everything. I think he's really good with interacting with the crowd rather than being on the mic and, and like cutting a promo, for instance. I, I think he's better at that way. I think with Will Ospreay, because people want to talk about his in-ring work to such a degree and debate it and all that stuff with Ricochet a couple of years ago, that, yeah, there's such a focus on that that not a lot of people talk about. You know, another reason why he's got to where he has, and that's because, really, year after year, he's improved in all areas of his game. Yeah, his, his in-ring performance is, is unbelievable, really, and it's, it's second to none. He's so good. No, some, I think, like... Again, I think a lot of people were introduced to him in that Ricochet match a few years ago. But then when you actually go and watch more, especially now when he's developed over the last you know, two, three years, he's just, it's almost like watching, you know, somebody redefine what pro wrestling is or at least give it a different a spin. That's how I, with both yeah. of those guys, that's how yeah, I see it because there's, it's not something, you can't learn to do that. You can either do it or you can't do that. And that's, you know, that's why he's so good at it because yeah. he's an inspiration. He's, you know, he's a trendsetter, all these things. And he works so much as well. Like he had, a, he's, he's busy all the time. The fact he goes out constantly, I'm not surprised yeah. here he would do that. You know what a stage to do it on. But oh yeah, yeah, because he 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 works at so many different companies than he like across across the world. So you know he he's, he is constantly constantly like working. But yeah, 
if you think he does all those performances and he puts in performances like that night in, night out, then yeah, he's he's really impressive. Was this the best match of the night? No, definitely not. Interesting. Well, yeah, I mean, Taichi did win. Like we took Kanemaru came out, hit him with a low blow, smacked him with the mic, and yep. then Taichi hit Osprey with a with a with a, a power bomb. And that was that. I wonder if that ties into anything else going. Forward. It probably does. It's not on TV, so who's going to know? It, it did tie into anything on TV, but it tied into what happened over the night, over the course of the night. Okay, so we're, we're going to get I'll, there. I'll, I'll come back to it later, yeah. All right, okay. So then we had the interval, which makes sense, because you've got to have everyone come down after, after a Will Ospreay match and a Tai Chi match, yeah. really. And then David Starr, amazingly, won uh, his match against Tiger Mask. Yeah, which I I love that I like David Starr. David Starr's great. Like um, I'm not going to say that I know him very well, but he's been on a couple of shows that I've also wrestled on, and he's just he's just brilliant. It's a, a nice dude and really good at what he yeah. does. So for him to have a to have the opportunity and to win as well, I just, it was great. It really made me put a smile on my face. He cut an amazing promo before. What did he um, say? He just got on the mic and he said because um, it actually turned out they changed the match right at the last minute to a fatal four way. They did, right. I've got that up here. Yes. Yeah. So he also Phantasmo and Ishimori are in the and, match. Yeah, and Bone Soldier. So what he did, he cut a promo and said um, how annoyed he was because it was for the title, the RPW Cruiserweight title that David Starr holds. Um, and he said that only Tiger Masters actually earned the right because he defeated him on the Saturday night. Um, he actually is the only one who earns the right to face him for the title. And then he sort of said, I don't know who... What the hell El Phantasmo has actually done to deserve um, a title shot? And he said, and who the hell is... And he, he was like pretending to that he couldn't say Ishimori's name. He was like trying to read it out, like sort of like um, as if he couldn't read Japanese names and stuff, which was quite funny. Brilliant. As if he's never heard of him sort of thing. I love it. See, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. And then he was just there, like sat in the corner of the ring, like hugging, hugging the belt when the rest of the three came out, which is quite funny. <laughs> but that was, this was an amazing match. Um, I thought definitely uh, to come straight into this um, from like the interval. It's probably one of my favorite matches of the night um, just because of the spots. So there's a crazy spot that El Fantasma, who I'm sorry, I've never heard of before, like on the indie scene. Um, but I will never forget him now because of the spot he pulled off. And I've act- I actually got, um, I was videoing it right at the correct time when he'd done it. Yeah. So uh, I've, I've got it on my Twitter page for anyone who wants to see it. But he basically jumps up onto the top rope and the three of them are outside and then he walks along the rope and then like springboards on the top rope, backflips onto them. And it was it was unbelievable. <laughs> I think yeah. I've I've seen him. He, I think he's done a bit with uh, Revolution Pro El Fantasma. I think I've seen him a bit in there. Well, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure I have. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's just because he is very much of the Will Osprey mold, isn't he? In terms of just athletic yes. and like a high flyer. Yeah, yeah just was, does stuff. That you just said, just, just does stuff that you can't believe, and you're like, how on earth have you even? thought about doing that let alone go to yeah. do it to begin with um now apparently david Starr ripped off tiger mask his mask yeah he did yeah it was you could sort of see like the back of tiger mask's head all right and, so they like, covered the everything else up though yeah, so that's a big deal yeah face. yeah but now he's going for it the whole match which is quite funny um because obviously tiger's so over and david star is a good heel so it was it worked quite well with with that sort of match um but yeah it's, it was it was a good finish because it was um Phantasmo done a senton bomb. His finisher, I think it might be his finisher anyway, just like a senton bomb and then onto Tiger Mask. And then he goes up to the opposite corner and then moonsaults back onto him as well. Ridiculous. Like really quick. And then as he'd done that, David Starr came in and just as Phantasmo was like pinning him, he picked up Phantasmo and chucked him out of the ring and then pinned um, Tiger Mask one, two, three to get the win. So he didn't even like getting any offense in to actually win the match which I, like I, no, I thought proper, was good yeah proper here and also that breaks out from other you know other matches on the show because new japan often have you know they don't really do count outs or dqs or rarely they do those things yeah so that's yeah. a good way to have a heel win there's a reason there with the whole mask and then yeah you know it's, i think it's a good way to pace up the show at least it sounds it anyway yeah the crowd was really into it as well how did that one go i mean that's been quite long right yeah, that one was quite a long time. I would, I would have said like close to 14, 15 yeah, minutes. Yeah, I think coming definitely. off the interview, you've got four people in there, you've got a story to tell. Yeah, um, but there was there was a few really good spots in, in that match. And the one that I got on video, I've I, I, I check out my Twitter um, at Omega underscore Luke. I've pinned it um, for anyone who wants to see it. Um, it is it is amazing to say. It's so good. I will make sure that really I, re- I will retweet that as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that you can find it. Uh, right now, we get into... 
Well, actually, in a minute we did, but I think you're going to like this one, given what you said earlier. We're Jay White defeating Cole Fletcher with the Blade Runner. I yeah. imagine that's just going to be... Again, I haven't seen any of this stuff. I'm just speculating what I'd imagine they would do. I'd imagine... I, I, I use the word traditional, but I mean yeah. between those two guys. I imagine a very traditional New Japan match. Very well worked, very hard hitting, very quick, very fast, very flippy. Um, yeah. Yeah, that, that would be my guess. So originally, he was supposed to be facing Chris Brooks. Um, but they announced before the match that uh, Chris Brooks was injured uh, yeah. no ill for the night I, I saw that somewhere where i don't know maybe i'm making it up now but yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so um they announced that carl fletcher uh, was going to replace him and I've, I've never heard of carl fletcher before um I, he's I, I believe he's actually only 18 years old so that i thought considering his age he was massively impressive well he's been in defiant that's how i know yeah. carl fletcher he, he's wrestling yeah. Defiant. But yeah, i think he is very young but again he's one of these guys that just seems to take the idea of gravity and go nah no, yeah. <laughs> not yeah, interested in gravity. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I was quite surprised though. I, I'm not sure whether they announced it, but it looked like from the way that like, Jay White was acting in the ring that he was sort of like using the belt um, as if like it was a title shot. I don't think it was, but it know. just seemed like he was. But me and my mate sort of laughed because it was a New Zealander and Jay White going against an Australian Carl Fletcher <laughs> in, the, in UK. the UK for a Japanese company for a US title belt. Welcome to wrestling in 2018, my friend. Yeah, which I thought was amazing. I don't think it was for the US belt, but if that was the case, then that that's pretty special, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my new best, my new best mate, Jay White, who I <laughs> felt with. Um, <laughs> And his US title belt is it is a beautiful belt. I love it so much. What do you um, think about seeing him in person? Because I know a lot of people, um, they're high on Jay so White. Nice. Yeah. They're high on Jay White, but I've also seen a lot of people going, but not yet, but not yet. Do you know what I mean? As if they're, yeah. he, he's going to get to where he wants to be. And I, oh, yeah. I don't necessarily think that's true. I actually think he's, he's good already, to be honest. I think he's amazing already, considering his age. Because I think he's like 27, something like that. He's and definitely he's, young, yeah. He was in NXT yeah. for a while, wasn't he? So. But I think he's really impressive. Like, his his moves that he pulls off. I really like his move set. Um, and especially the blade runners. So obviously it looks like a sister Abigail, doesn't it? It's exactly the same as sister Abigail. Yeah, yeah. Uh, It's a really good move. And obviously he's a big guy, but he's still athletic. Yeah. Like he's, I think he's like six, two, something like that, but he's absolutely jacked, massive bloke, but he's so athletic, I think. And, um, the crowd are really into him. They, they, they love him. I think he's got one of the best gimmicks as well. going. the, the old like switchblade gimmick. I think it's really good. Um, but no, it was, I think, um, to begin with, because uh, the crowd didn't really know who Carl Fletcher was maybe, or, or maybe only a few people knew who Carl Fletcher was. Yeah. That's what you got um, him over, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And he definitely did. Um, there was a spot they did where Jay White was like shushing the crowd and then slapping his chest, like chopping his chest. And it got to the point where Carl Fletcher's chest were, like, was like bleeding. It got that bad. It was like I'd seen him after at the like the table where you go meet the wrestlers, and it was it, it looked so sore, like it was he was cut open like on his chest, and it was just like bright red. But it got to a point where he taking so many chops that in the end he was he was calling out Jay White to hit him harder, and it was it was really good like spot that they did, and the crowd really loved it. And in the end, like the Carl Fletcher was getting the chance as well, which was really good. I thought. Did you, at any point did you think Jay White was going to lose though? That sounds like uh, a tough sell to me. <laughs> no, I don't think he did. I think um, at one point, Carl Fletcher did like a Falcon Arrow, I think it was, yeah. um, on Jay White for the pin. And that was like a close um, like close two count. But no, I, I think it was obvious, obviously, Jay White was going to win. But yeah. overall, it was still probably one of the entertaining matches of the night because of how well they did. I think before an American crowd as well, I think, I think they all do. But I think Jay White especially just has a... I don't know. There's something about Jay White that I think works well in the Western audiences. Don't really know what I mean by that. Yeah. It's just how I feel. Yeah. And then he also did um, Carl Fletcher. Sorry, he also did like a, a high flying spot where Jay White was outside of the ring and he sort of like ran up to the tan buckle and then like front flipped out onto him, which, which is, is quite impressive to watch. And I got that on camera as well, which is right, good. Okay, everyone, what's your Twitter? Twi uh, pump your Twitter again. It's at Omega underscore Luke. There you go. Look, you got you got a new gift, uh, new wrestling gift, Kim, right here. You got yeah, to, you got to go check him out. Them, yeah. Uh, uh, then we move on to what is oh, you know, this I, I couldn't. I, I went and watched as much as I could through through clips. Yeah, but Zach Saber Junior. Defeated Akada. Now I've seen the finish. I heard the crowd. The crowd go mental. Like <laughs> they go yeah. absolutely ballistic. Now I know Zack Zaber Jr. is amazing. He's the best technical wrestler in the world. However, I, 
I can understand how that divides some people because some people do like flippy shit and everything like that. And that's fine. I don't care about stuff like that. You like and you hate whoever you want. However, yeah. I, don't, I, I don't think there's an argument to be said that he's not an amazing wrestler, Zack Sabre Jr., because he is. And given the years he's having, especially you know, in New Japan when he went... Um, you know, went through all those guys in the New Japan Cup, or whatever it was. I can't remember now. It's been so much. Yes, this Naito, year. Ibushi. Exactly. Uh, he went through everybody. Sanada. And now he's done this. There is no two way. I, I get this on TV and stuff, but to me, there is no no two ways that they're not building him up into something. Just walk me yeah. through it. Tell me about the match. Tell me what they did and the reaction. Everything. But it's quite weird because Zack Sabre Jr. came out first, and like he got an ovation when his music came on. But when he came out, he was like flipping the fans off. As if he was like a massive heel yeah, in his home no. country, I, which is I, I quite strange. That. Because he, he's, I guess, because he's fighting the best wrestler in the world. Yeah. And I imagine on Saturday, if I was fighting the best wrestler in the world, and the show was called Simon Miller Promotions, I would still expect to get booed because it's flipping a card. Like you know, it's yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. I, I just think sometimes things transcend whatever you're meant to be doing. So yeah. that, that doesn't surprise me. I kind of understand that. So, yeah, so he came out sort of like flipping the crowd off. Um, I, when you said about the like people, like the the high flying stuff, um, might not do a taste to it. I could sense like the crowd when it was a lot of um, holding and submissions and stuff were like calming down um, to it. But then they did like a few spots where Okada would go for certain moves. Like, for instance, he went for an elbow drop off the top rope and Sabre Jr. caught him uh, in an iron bar from the elbow drop which was unbelievable like that's to ridiculous. see that yeah, and then from that like the way he just transitions from submission to submission and then puts in like the set puts it in okada into like three submissions at a time instead of just one so not only is he then working oh yeah he like, just, he just moves dominant. around yeah he just moves around it's like an octopus it's like twister isn't it it's like twister yeah. it's just that like, i'm just going to keep adding parts of my body even though there's nowhere else to put it in yeah, and then at one point he's um, like doing a submission whilst doing the middle fingers to the crowd, and like Okada's still there in pain. So it, it just like he's really good at stuff like that. And we, I know you said like obviously probably the best technical wrestler uh, in the world right now. Would you say he's probably best technical wrestler ever, like submission wise? Mm, I mean, yeah, I think he's in the conversation. Yeah, uh, I, I think you do. I had to really sit down and think because there, there's lovely good good guys that did that. But yeah, I think he's in the conversation. Yeah, definitely today. Yeah. And I think because he's the best today, then yeah, instantly he has to go into you know the all time categories because he's only getting better too. Oh um, yeah, because uh, like to see him live was like you really do appreciate how good he is at transitioning into the submission moves. Like you you couldn't you'd be afraid if you were a wrestler to put any move on him because he can counter it into a submission that's just how it seems yeah because he's that good right and that's his gimmick yeah. as well which is why it's amazing his gimmick ties into his wrestling and vice versa like it's yeah. just it's just fantastic yeah uh so that that was like really so, impressive so walk me through the ending then so what did they do I, it must have teased it a little bit yeah so um Okada was trying to get Okada by the way got a massive ovation when right, he came right, out yeah that was that was it has that to be, was that, and it was really amazing to see him um, like live. It was just a bit uh, surreal, to be honest. Um, so yeah, he was trying to do the Rainmaker quite a few times. I think at one point he hit him with a tombstone, or like the spinning tombstone, which he does, which is... Oh, I love that, yeah. Yeah, so good. Um, so yeah, he tried catching him with the Rainmaker a couple of times, um, but Sabre Jr. would like go underneath and like go around the back of him, put him into like an op- octopus lock, I think it's called, something like that. Um, and then he... Also, he caught him once with the Rainmaker and held wrist control, but didn't pin him. I was going to say, there's no way he kicked out of a Rainmaker. I do not believe it. No. I do not believe it in a million years. No. And then when he went to go for the second one, then he got counted into another iron bar or something like that. But the finish, I've actually got a video of that as well. Uh, I was just really lucky, I guess. Um, Is that on your he, Twitter? I'm going to post all of them on Twitter, okay, yeah. Okay, good, right, okay. Cause I, I've um, seen it, but I want other people to see it as well. Yeah, so he basically, he goes for the Rainmaker and he sort of like goes underneath his legs and then like flips him upside down. Uh, and then when Locada tries getting out, he then sort of like arches over and like locks him down for the pin. Say that again. I've seen it, but say it again anyway. <laughs> so he like, he goes for the Rainmaker. Um, he like dies through his legs. Sabre Jr. Like dies through Okada's legs and then sort of like flips Okada over. Um, so he's on his back with his legs in the air. And then as Okada tries to like jump up with his legs, he like locks his legs down into a pinfall and then like arches his body over Okada. 
um, for the one, two, three. Right, I, I watched that as you were saying it. That is the best way you can describe it. It's basically yeah, it's hard to explain. It's yeah. mental, is what it is. It's absolutely yeah, it's... mental. It is. You're right. It is like watching some kind of weird creature do things the human body's not allowed to do. It's a great yeah. finish though, and watching the pop from people who I don't actually think they thought that was going to be the finish. Oh, definitely it not. Was, like it was, it was, it was shocking. Like the pop was so loud because of actually Penn and Okada. Well, that's so, it, right? I mean, he's only, lost, he's only lost once in two years or whatever it is. So, yeah. you know, the it fact is. they did it. And, I, and again, that is the beauty of having shows that aren't televised, but you still know it's going to do the rounds on social media and stuff. Oh, yeah. And like to see, to say, like, um, I've seen Okada lose is it's something really, which not many people can say. And I don't think there ever are going to be that many people that can say it. I don't think this is the end for that man by any, uh, by no. any, any stretch of match. How long was the match itself? Oh, I would say it's close to 20 minutes. I was going to say, this is where we start getting massive. Um, yeah. and it just it just sounds it just sounds brilliant to be completely yeah honest. it was an amazing finish um yeah it, it, obviously that's three out of three now suzuki goon over chaos which i was alluding to earlier say again sorry it's three out of three suzuki goon victories over of course chaos yeah you're right yeah you're right of course i didn't even yeah. think of it like that you're right there you go to yeah. that's in new japan they're always thinking <laughs> i love it very clever uh and then we segue into the main event in the last match of the show which was suzuki versus ishii again if you just want i'm sure luke's got some stuff as well but if you just want to go and uh yeah just look up some uh, if you want to see two people that want to kill each other just, oh, <laughs> just go and watch the clips of this fight. match yeah. it is it was for the undisputed british championship as well suzuki won uh, yeah. I haven't actually seen the finish. I tried to find some clips, but I could only find them forearming each other in the face as if they wanted each other to die. <laughs> there must have been about 100 forearms in this match. And like um, some of the hits that they were taking, like how either of them was able to still stand was beyond me. Cause oh, yeah, they're crazy. It's a really hard hitting. Uh, and the slaps as well. They were slapping each other across the face quite a lot. And then like egging each other on to do it. It was just like a brutal fight, really. It was. Oh, that's what it looked like. Yeah. I mean, did, yeah. did, did it live up again? They got a lot to follow up after Osprey and Okada and stuff. Do you feel like it lived up to it? Yeah, definitely did. Yeah, I think um, it was a, a comp- what I liked about the whole night was no ma- no two matches were the same. So you had like um, the Fatal Four Way had a lot of high flying stuff. Um, the Jay White was sort of like an all round match. The Okada match was like a very submission and technical based. And this was just like a big brawl. It was just like two dudes just wanting to kill each other. Like you said, just punching the crap out of each other. How did Suzuki win too? What was the finish? It was a gotch pile driver. Of course it which was. I think it's the first time I've actually seen him like nail one for a long time. Yeah. But he held him in the air for what seemed to be well over 10 seconds. And that was impressive to see because he sort of like was rocking him as if he was going to drop him again, but he held him in like the gotch power driver hold for so long and then just like planted him for the pin. How did the fans react to that as well? Yeah, they went nuts. It's a title change, right? So Yeah, yeah, they went nuts. And um, obviously Suzuki's music is really over with all the fans. Yeah, in it, yeah, so yeah. it was good because they managed to play, they managed to chuck out that song twice after that <laughs> just to get a bit more of a crowd reaction, I think it was. But after... Um, Ishii like sort of left the ring as he was walking up the ramp Walter then came out and kicked Ishii and then sort of like stood over Ishii and challenged Suzuki for the belt there you go so Walter so fucking Walter, right in there Suzuki. with New Japan yeah what was the other stuff you're going to mention with Osprey uh that was the chaos losing to Suzuki ah, of course right yep 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 I've got you yeah, I, so I that was know, the second I didn't know whether Osprey got involved at the end here or something like that no I'm with you well that's cool yeah. though I mean I don't know when they're going to do that Walter Suzuki match I haven't seen it planned no, or I'm anything guessing like it'll that. be on RPW because that's obviously yeah I mean that was the title yeah you'd imagine but it's, it's, it, I, I, I shouldn't say it's strange anymore in 2018 but it's not but the incestuous nature how all these shows kind of tie into each other is great you yeah, know, it's really cool. Yeah, it but if, really you, if you now you want to go watch that, you can go see a different promotion and see new wrestlers. Like it's like a, an ecosystem, and I think it's yeah, I love it. I think it's really yeah. Because cool. I think like the sort of challenge between Ishii and Suzuki for that belt came about at it might have been Dominion. I can't remember whether it was Dominion or not, but it was on a New Japan show, and they were challenging for that belt, which was like quite weird. Apparently, as well. Apparently, Kevin Kelly was there, so there's rumours that it may go on New Japan World as well. It might have been because they were they were looking at a hard cam. Well, maybe so, but that'd be, if, yeah. they, if they put the Okada thing on New Japan, well, that's got to tie. I mean, if that isn't just a you know one final last nail in the coffin to prove that Zack Sabre Jr. is about to come one of the biggest guys in New Japan, I don't know what it is. Like. Yeah, he I, then came out after with the rest of Suzuki Goon and um, like cut a bit of a promo, um, just like he said he told us in November this was going to happen. Suzuki Goon was going to take over and 
Zack Sabre Jr. was going to take over New Japan, that sort of stuff. What kind of reaction did he get? Yeah, he got a massive pop. The whole the whole Suzuki game got a massive pop because obviously that was four out of four over Chaos then. Is it? Course, yeah. I like to point out as well. I know I, I do some what culture video as well. I know I call it Suzuki Gun. I know. You don't have to yeah. come yet at me in the comments. That's just what I do. I've been selling it for ages now. I can't stop. So leave me alone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just do the same as well, to be fair. I do it all the time. I say it all the time. It's only, it's only like, again, an hour after. Like, oh, I said it again. But I'm doing it now. <laughs> so really then, it sounds like, A, well worth the travel. Well worth the ticket price. I know tickets went really quickly and stuff. It just sounds like a great, you know, a really good sort of, not only a good wrestling show, but a great blending of English talent with European talent. The New Japan guys giving people a platform. And also, like I said, the first New Japan show here. I mean, ever, maybe? Apart from yeah. obviously the Milton Keynes. I can't remember the last time New Japan. If ever has come over here, they probably haven't. I, I don't remember it. But it was quite it was quite interesting actually. I was sat next to a guy who um who came and he sort of asked me if it was my first New Japan show. So I sort of said, Yeah, it was and asked him and he said he was lucky enough last year, um, his friend lives in Japan and he watched uh the G one climax with Omega Okada number three. Well that's just ridiculous. Yeah, so I was a bit jealous of him to be honest. So yeah, that's just I mean, what, what world? He was still it? reacting like this show was really good. So, if the fact that he's seen that and seen this one, so it must have been quite a good show. I don't think New Japan can put on bad shows at the moment because they're the, the, oh. the, the, the product's too over. Yeah, um, oh, and I don't want to sound like that guy, but it's true because the product is so over. It's almost like you've won before you started. And yeah, that's, that's it's on the up as well. Like they're expanding. To, they're doing more shows in the US. They're doing because obviously, like tonight, uh, last night, there wasn't any Bullet Club. There wasn't any. Lij, which I was gutted about, because um, they were in Florida, I think it was. Yeah, fighting each other, so they had like the two factions I, in one, I, two I, factions. There. I like that in a way because you got to come back, come back with more of the guys that we haven't seen before. I think that's good. Yeah. Well, it's uh, going to make me want to go back if, yeah, if they announce exactly. Bullet Club Lij is going. Exactly. So. so I actually think that's uh, I think it's a, it's a really smart it's a really smart way to do it, especially because they've clearly smashed it out of the park this time as well. Yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, there we go. So, I mean, any sort of final parting words you want to throw out there about the show itself or anything? Um, no, not really. Um, it was a good show. And if you ever get a chance to to go to one, definitely go to one. It was well worth the four-hour journey up and four-hour journey back, I thought, definitely. Um, well worth doing. And just if you don't like watch New Japan, definitely just try and check it out on YouTube. And if you like it, go subscribe to their New Japan World because it's so good. Yeah, and also, there was obviously a night one in Milton Keynes as well. And just in yeah. case you are interested, the Great Khan defeated Shota Amuno. I don't know much about Shota Amuno. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. That's, I don't know. that's the young lion. Oh, the same guy, is it? Yeah. Uh, okay. Shota Amuno. There we go. Yeah. So I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, Tashi Moj- uh, Tashi Ishimo- I can't talk. Ishii, I call him. Takahashi defeated, yeah. <laughs> defeated the Aussie Open, which is Carl Fletcher and Mark Davis. It's very cool. Uh, El, De- El Desperado, Taichi, and Dakushi defeated Jay White, Gado, and Torio. So there's a lot of crossover here, just kind of switching people around. Yeah. Uh, Tiger Master defeated David Starr, hence why they got it the other way around the other night. And then Walty defeated uh, Yuji Nagata. Uh, Yoshihashi defeated Chris Brooks, but that's a really good match. And Will yeah. Ospreay defeated Kanemaru. And then the British tag champ, Suzuki and Zack Sabre Jr. defeated Okada and Ishii. Which is, who took the fall in that one? Because I've only catching up. Scott, I, was... I, I think I've seen it was Zack Sabre Jr. Uh, submitted Ishii. I'm looking now quickly because I, I was away all this weekend, so I'm literally catching up by talking to you. Yeah, I think uh, I remember seeing that it was Zack Sabre Jr. submitting Ishii. Uh, I think you're right. I can't actually see it without making this the word podcast ever. So we'll say yes, you're probably right. I can't, yeah. <laughs> I can't find it. Um, which is interesting, really. What a couple of nights for a card. Obviously, he didn't lose per se on the night before, but on the losing team. So maybe we're in for a losing streak story here. That's, yeah. I don't know about that, but I doubt it. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe not. We'll see what happens. But all in I, all, I'd like to see him go against Chris Jericho now for the Intercontinental. I would love that. I mean, that would yeah. be that would be ridiculous. Who knows, man? Chris Jericho was supposed to be one and done, and then he wasn't. So yeah, he's making his way through the roster. All the big names. Well. The, Mm, yeah, I can see that. Obviously, you've got to do something with Naito. I can see in a Cardo match, then maybe, yeah, maybe maybe he's done. We'll find out. Yeah. We, we, we will find out. But overall, though, you were you were impressed, right? Yeah, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Cool. Well, I like it, Luke. Well, look, I want to appreciate it. I want to say thank you very much for, your, for taking your time out to come and fill us in on and stuff like that, because I just think it's cool. I just Not think it's, uh, you know, I think it's, it's cool hearing about all these amazing, especially because what's happening at the end of this month when World of Sports is going to kick off, NXT UK is doing all its tours. Those two yeah. things are great. They're amazing. But there's also all this other amazing wrestling in the UK, even New Japan now coming over here. And it won't be the first, it won't be the last time, I should say. So, no. yeah, we, we, we will see. But overall, it gets two thumbs up from you, right? 
Definitely does, yeah. Right, so everyone, make sure you go to uh, Luke's Twitter, which again is Omega underscore Luke. Yep. And also, uh, you've got a podcast as well, correct? I have, yeah. So I've just started the podcast. I went uh, launched it last last week. Um, I've got about five or six episodes on there right now. The Omega Luke Wrestling Podcast. That's the one, yeah. So it's um, obviously it's in its infancy, but we're doing uh, fantasy booking which I sort of said about last time. So what I would do if I was like Vince McMahon in charge of, of certain wrestlers. Um, so far we've done like episodes like ret- how I'd retire the undertaker. Um, we did uh, Marty scale. If he was to go to WWE, uh, we also did Finn Balor. And I also did, which was probably my favorite episode, how we would book fantasy book, Cat Hawkins coming out of his losing streak. Love which... Cat Hawkins as well. So everyone should go, oh, I will make sure I listen to that today. Yeah, that <laughs> is brilliant. I, that's my favorite episode I've done so far. It's Amazing. really good. And also, uh, hopefully I will be on it next week as well. That's the plan. Yes, so, uh, that's the plan. Would, you... would you like to, should we say what we're going to do? Yeah, or why, we not? why not? Let's do, it's up to you. It's your podcast, man. Your choice. What would you like yeah. to do? You want, you want a tease or you want the... Let's, let's, let's plug it. All right, we? done. You go nuts. Because I think if we tell people that we're going to fantasy book how cm punk returns to wwe i think a lot more people would be interested in listening to it <laughs> well we're going to do that next week uh, i'll be making sure to keep everyone updated when that's going out keep an eye at simon 316 on twitter uh, and yeah but we'll, we will do that in around seven days or so time just because we were going to do this week but my week this week is crazy anyway luke thank you so much for coming on i'm glad you had a good time it sounds like a damn good show overall yeah um, no, thank you very much for having me on again always man always and like i say you can support all of this nonsense at patreon.com for simon 316 Every single dollar does help because it allows me to, you know, free up time in my day to do it. Because unfortunately, we have to pay for life. I'm also on Twitter at Simon316, at Instagram at Simon316. This podcast will also be on YouTube at YouTube, well, at YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Simon316. If you are on iTunes, give us five stars, give us a listen. Make sure you check out all Luke's stuff as well. And if nothing else, you can go to his Twitter and just see a load of gifts from last night's events that you didn't have to go to because Luke was there for you. Luke, again, thank you once more. And yeah, we'll be back with the uh, normal quote unquote edition of the podcast on Wednesday. Simon is Pro Wrestling podcast coming at you a minimum of twice a week thanks for listening i'll talk to you again soon